What does paradise look like to you? Imagine what it would be like to live in paradise. Hold on to that thought because we're going to come back to it. I'm a farmer and are grateful to be the steward of Mungarara Station, a 600 hectare diverse sheep and beef farm and eco lodge in Central Hawke's Bay. And I'd like to share with you our vision of restoring paradise and how we're applying the principles of what is broadly termed regenerative agriculture. All the photos that you'll see on the screen are photos that are taken on our farm. Our farm motto is optimising life. And after 15 years regenerating, we're seeing life come storming back. This includes 112,000 trees that we've be planted that are becoming homes to ever more birds. And an explosion of insect life that are finding habitat in our holistically managed pastures. And it extends to the hundreds of amazing people that visit our farm each year. So what is regenerative agriculture? To me, regenerative agriculture is hope. In the book Drawdown, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming, Paul Hawken and a team of scientists analysed scientific research to find solutions that would reverse global warming. In order to do this, we must work together to achieve drawdown. Drawdown is the point where greenhouse gases in the atmosphere begin to decline. Their study showed that this is possible using technology that already exists today. And the number one solution is our food system. Because not only can we draw down gases from the atmosphere and through photosynthesis, store them safely in the ground, the, one of the most effective ways of drawing down these greenhouse gases is by adding trees to a landscape. We can do this through silver pasture, syntropic agroforestry, and these are systems which are the most effective ways of drawing down carbon while maintaining the growing of food for humans and increasing biodiversity. At Mangarara, we are close to carbon neutral, but we have plans in place to increase tree planting that will enable our farm to sequester at least four times more carbon than what it emits. These management techniques are also super important to restore hydrological cycles, which are the water cycles on the planet which are often overlooked in the important role that they play in the Earth's climate. Regenerative agriculture is health. The de decrease in human health mirrors the decline in environmental health. With increasing rates of cancer, autoimmune disease, mental illness, and significant decreases in sperm counts and fertility, has us on a trajectory leading towards extinction. Again, the number one solution to restoring human health is with the food we eat. We can increase the nutrient density of our food and grow it with less chemicals, no chemicals. And thereby we are feeding the microbiome, which is the trillions of bacteria, archaea, fungi and viruses that live inside your gut. In fact, you have more microbe cells in your body than human cells. You are nature. Therefore, the, and the connection between the health of the microbes in the soil and the environment around us is intimately connected with your health. Australian research has also shown that farmers that are working with nature, as opposed to those that are working or fighting against nature, are much happier and have better mental health, which is really important in an industry that has one of the highest suicide rates. Regenerative agriculture is humble. Humility and openness are characteristics you'll find in many farmers on the regenerative path. Often you'll hear them declare that they've fallen in love with farming again and are excited to learn about a whole new world of microbiology that opens up under their feet. And they will humbly learn from nature with all her diversity and complexity and four billion years of field trials. Regen Ag is about connecting the dots and understanding that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Region agriculture is resilient. Building resilience into our farm business is what first got us looking down an alternative path. This picture is taken from uh, the drought in Hawke's Bay last year. And unfortunately, it's looking pretty similar again this year. Despite this being one of the worst droughts in living memory, 
we managed to make a profit on our farm without having to buy an extra feed or use nitrogen fertiliser. So with the changing climate, farms managed regeneratively are building resilience to climate shocks. And by increasing the health of our living soils, this enables the soil to, water to infiltrate into the soil and thereby reduces runoff and flooding. And by increasing carbon content in our soil, this enables the soil to store more water, which builds resilience to drought. It also became obvious to me that we should leave fossil fuels before they leave us. The role that oil plays in every aspect of our life is so insidious that we're like a fish who doesn't realise that it's completely immersed in water. We don't realise that the role that oil plays in every aspect of our modern lifestyle. It takes about 10 calories of fossil fuel energy to produce every calorie of food you eat. We are literally eating oil. Pastoral agriculture, the backbone of the New Zealand economy, is based on bringing in phosphate rock from North Africa. This system requires a lot of fossil fuels to dig it up, transport it, process it, get it onto our land. This just isn't a sustainable system to not only base our economy on, but the future of food in our country. Regenerative agriculture seeks to reduce reliance on oil and other off-farm inputs by adding diversity and trying to mimic natural systems. Regenerative agriculture is participatory. Those of us who are fortunate to be able to make choices about the food we eat all have a role to play. Taking action is empowering, especially when you join with others to share or grow food. There are no passengers on Spaceship Earth, we're all crew. Farmers don't like being told what to do, as most are practical, independent people. However, regenerative agriculture can work well for conservative farmers because it has no dogma and is not bound by rules. It's about measurable outcomes, and there are a number of ways of achieving these, depending on place and context. However, the following guiding principles apply. Keep the soil surface covered. Nature always tries to maintain a protective cover over the soil surface. We do this, this picture is showing um, the trampled pasture that's been left behind after a herd of cattle have grazed the paddock. Applying mulch to your vegetable garden is using the same principles. Limit disturbance. Put away the plough and limit cultivation. Our tractor is finding other uses these days, like supplying, keeping the timber up to um, this portable sawmill. Build diversity. A guiding principle on our farm is diversity, diversity, diversity. This is how nature builds in resilience, and it applies to the diversity of the microbes in the soil, which is supported by a diverse range of plants in our pastures, which is surrounded by a diverse range of trees, and complemented by beef cattle, sheep, dairy cows, pigs, and chickens. Keep a living root in the soil. Through the process of photosynthesis, growing plants are providing sugars to microbes in the soil. The microbes use this um, sugars as their energy source and in return, bring minerals and nutrients to the plant. A number one rule on our farm, after honesty, is to avoid creating bare soil because bare soil is effectively starving this underground microbial workforce. Integrate animals. Animals play an integral role in a healthy ecosystem and are essential, essential to the nutrient cycles. Zimbabwean Alan Savory observed how the massive herds of buffalo grazing the Great Plains of Africa had over time built deep, fertile soils. These animals were constantly on the move and through a combination of grazing, trampling, defecating, and then allowing the grasses to grow again, over time, a really healthy ecosystem evolved. We applied this principle at Mangarara using holistic grazing management, where large mobs of ruminant animals are shifted regularly onto recovered pastures. But instead of predators like lions keeping the herds on the move, we're using portable electric fences and shifting our herds at least daily. To me, Regenerative agriculture is simply committing to grow food in a way that makes the whole world better. 
Many people are struggling with the lack of definition for regenerative agriculture. However, I don't believe it needs to be defined because to define something is to bring it to an end or put it in a box. It's not a thing. It's about our relationship with life and is therefore an evolutionary process that will continue to evolve as humanity evolves. And it will be applied differently depending on the farmer's context and the unique ecosystems or cultural conditions where it's been practiced anywhere around the world. The term regenerative agriculture has unfortunately become a bit divisive. It shouldn't be, because again, it doesn't matter what you call it. It could equally be termed ecological agriculture because it's all about outcomes which can be verified with hard data. Every family farm that I know wants to pass the farm on to the next generation in at least as good a condition as what they found that took over the management. But we need to be measuring the health of our land, water and biodiversity and thereby drawing a line in the sand so that over time we can track the changes. We can't manage what we don't measure. It's about understanding that we as food producers are all on a continuum. Some things we do well, other parts of our management need improving. But when we have good data, we can identify our strengths and weaknesses, and then with the support of a network of farmers and consultants, we can make improvements. Regenerative agriculture is a journey of self-discovery. Our relationship with the world around us changes when we take the time to look inside ourselves and be honest about what's important to us. If we can feel a connection to all life and find peace within ourselves, we start to reflect this in the world around us and we apply it to how we care for the land and grow food. So there are many reasons why a farmer may choose to go down the regenerative path. It may be because they're looking for better environmental outcomes, more profit, better human health, more resilience, or simply because it just makes sense. If you're curious to learn more about Regen Ag, the best way to learn is to visit a farmer who's already making changes on their farm. Otherwise, Quorum Sense is an awesome website with loads of information and a social network that will help you connect with others, other Kiwis already on the path. Making the transition to regenerative agriculture needn't come at a financial cost. The investment is in time and knowledge. And regenerative principles can be applied far beyond the farm gate because this is more about a paradigm shift in our hearts and our minds. Where the environment is getting better, where human health and relationships and equity are all improving. I believe New Zealand should set the bold goal of being the world's first regeneration nation. And of course, this philosophy is in perfect alignment with the Māori principle of taia, where the well-being of the whenua and the awa are essential to the well-being of the people. Taia speaks to the interconnectedness of all life. Kaitiakitanga is also part of our heritage as caretakers of the land which treats life with reverence and respect. Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems using the same thinking we used when we created them. A regenerative mindset is this paradigm shift in thinking. So much focus these days is on doing less bad to the environment or reducing your footprint. If that's the best we can do, the planet would be better off without us. But we do have a reason to be here. And with the regenerative mindset, we can have a positive impact on the earth. Imagine what this does for your enthusiasm when you jump out of bed every morning, eager to play your role in restoring ecosystems and creating beauty as part of your everyday life. This is my job as an ecosystem manager and provider of nutrition for wellness, also known as a farmer. The key to making this shift is, is through our connection with nature and understanding that we are a part of nature not apart from nature. It sounds obvious, but this shift from me to we is the evolutionary leap of consciousness that's gonna be required to get to your vision of paradise. Every day we connect intimately with nature through the food we eat. And to borrow a phrase from my American farming inspiration, Joel Salatin, food is our ecological umbilical cord that connects us to the ecosystem that grew it. The food you choose to eat is coming from a system that's either degrading the environment 
or it can be regenerating. You're making these choices every time you put food in your mouth. And so the dollars spent on food are votes for the future. Your children will inherit. And it's not as simple as choosing a vegetarian diet versus an omnivore diet. It's all about how that food was grown and where. Remember that vision you had at the beginning of my talk of paradise, health, happiness, beauty, and abundance? That can become a reality. And I believe it's our destiny. Paradise already exists inside each and every one of us. And we can rediscover it by connecting with nature, by being mindful and grateful. And to recreate paradise in the world around us, our food system must be regenerative. I encourage you to learn about where your food is coming from and how it's grown. Connect with the farmers and growers who produce it, and you're welcome to visit us at Mangarara. But most importantly, embark on your own regenerative journey. Thank you.